As much as we'd like to, none of us can reliably trust any one source for all our information. Because of this, we quickly learn to spot the fake and save the truth for future reference. This is our memory. We begin with a nearly blank page and continually add to it as we learn and grow. But we never run out of paper. Our brains can hold an estimated 2.5 petabytes of information. Remember that number, by the way. By doing this work ourselves, we minimize the influence others have on our information. Our understanding is not made of their truth, but the truth, or so we think. But we are far too confident in our memories. And ironically, our poor memory is exactly why we overestimate it. When you come across a suspicious website or a biased newspaper, you can easily check its validity. Any claim can be corroborated or disproven simply by comparing it to other sources. Now, for a moment, distance yourself from your own memory and see it not as a perfect hard drive that you record to, but as simply another newspaper or website. If you wanted to check the validity of one of your memories, you'd simply be comparing it to another memory. That's like using one page of a book to verify another page in the same book. Because there's no escaping memory, you must rely on it as a single perfect source of truth. And just as relying on any one website or newspaper makes you susceptible to propaganda and distortion, your memory silently deceives you. Another reason for your overconfidence is that you don't remember what you don't remember. In other words, there's a survivorship bias. We only see the memories that survive, those that we remember. When you forget to do something, you've by definition forgotten about it you'll never realize that your memory failed. And every time you do remember something, it looks like proof of your perfect memory. Of course, it gets an A+. It isn't graded on the times it failed. In the 1980s, a mother suspected that her son was being abused at his daycare. When she called the police, a large investigation began. Hundreds of other children were questioned, and many were also said to have been abused at the daycare. But what seemed like a clear case soon turned bizarre when children began remembering clowns, underground tunnels, and even flying witches. No evidence was found except that of a very interesting memory phenomenon. All these children weren't lying, they really did have vivid memories they just weren't real. At the beginning, the children had denied the abuse, but the story had generated a panic. Rumors and fear were rampant, which led to incorrect assumptions. Investigators wanted so badly to lock up the bad guys that they created them. The children were told that they may have suppressed memories of the abuse. In this process, they were asked to imagine abuse as it was described to them. This suggestive questioning technique was so effective that 360 children soon went from denying to providing colorful details. Now, you might attribute this mistake to the age of the children, so let's look at a study done on adults. Before this study began, Parents of the study's participants were asked to provide major childhood events in the lives of the son or daughter, the study participants. Then, the researchers told the participants that they were going to discuss the memories provided by their parents. Among these memories, the researchers planted a fake one. Do you remember when you went to a wedding as a kid and accidentally spilled a punch bowl on the parents of the bride? At first, participants couldn't remember. But when they returned days later to complete the study, many could remember the fake event, and some even added their own details. Researchers have created an environment in which they could very easily implant false memories. Both this study and the daycare investigation show that we can not only create completely false memories, but also that the circumstances which allow for it are quite common. All it takes is an imagination and some details provided by someone else, and the event becomes our own. But it doesn't stop there. Even recalling a memory is enough to distort it. When we remember something, we're really recalling the last time we remembered it. And each time we remember something, it gets changed ever so slightly. These changes would be insignificant, except that each time we recall a memory, it inherits all the changes from your past recalls and gets distorted even more. Our most important memories, a trip, wedding, or a moment with a deceased relative, are recalled most often and are therefore most distorted. Luckily, we aren't completely defenseless. We all have what's called a meta-memory, an understanding of our memory and its limitations. When you stop and think, that doesn't sound right, I think I'm misremembering, your meta-memory has been triggered, letting you correct the mistake. But memory expert Julia Shaw writes in her book The Memory Illusion, meta-memory is by no means flawless, however, and in trying to make sense of false memories, we can spin further narratives and come up with excuses so as to make things fit. In other words, this can backfire. And in trying to correct our memory, we can end up filling in gaps incorrectly, planting more false memories. But of course, you aren't so gullible. Your memory must be better than average. So surely you can recall the number I told you to remember earlier. 
Don't feel bad if this video has made you question your memory abilities, because the best way to improve it is to be aware of its flaws. Hopefully now you can understand the flaws of your brain and do your best to adjust. That is, if you can remember them. This video was a collaboration with a channel called Polymatter, which absolutely deserves more traffic than it currently gets. If you'd like to learn more about fascinating topics like the one in this video, make sure to click over to Polymatter and check out their videos, and give them some love from Second Thought. If you enjoyed this video, you can click here to watch these next. And if you're tired of learning, come watch me play video games with a friend on my new gaming channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.